Happy Tuesday, Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel. Another game, another run rule for Tennessee. Tennessee Tech comes into Knoxville. They'd won a couple in a row against Tennessee the last two years. Not tonight. Was not happening tonight. Just Tennessee team come out of the gates hot. Did not look back with another run rule victory tonight. There's a lot to talk about as there's just news with the program today, which was not good news. But how's this team going to answer moving forward? Of course, I'll start off news about Billy Amick is going to be out. Looks like maybe a couple weeks or at least this weekend right now. Apparently, it was like appendix. I don't know if he had his appendix removed or what it was. But, uh, you know, Amick is out for he was out tonight. He's out this weekend. We got to see a little bit of Ariel Antigua tonight and uh, 0 for 3 to play. But, man. My goodness, guys, if you have not seen it, go check out some highlights. His defensive work, incredible. Absolutely insane. Antigua started short. Dean Curley moved over to third. I've talked about that before, how they could go with that possible lineup. They have a lot of different options, and I think it's something that bears watching later on in the year if you get some guys struggling. Now, we'll talk about more of this lineup and some guys who are starting to come on. But if you get some dudes who start struggling, could you possibly go in Tigua short? You know, Curly played some outfield in um, back in the fall. Christian Moore played some outfield back in the fall. So there's options there. Blake Burt played some outfield back in the fall. Could you possibly move Amick over to first, Burt to the outfield if you need it? I don't know that that's their preferred lineup by any means. But they worked. Tony Vitello talked about that. There's numerous guys who wanted to do what they could to help out the team. It is a selfless team, it seems like, this year for sure, where there was possibly issues with, I don't know, there were definitely issues the first half of the year, and then it seems everybody got on the right page and made things happen last year. And then, of course, the offseason happened as well. But, you know, Tennessee has a lot of options. Right now, let's get right into that with the lineup tonight. The, the first thing I saw, when I saw the lineup, I was like, what in the world is going on here? Is you had Robin Villeneuve leading off tonight. But, uh, hey, man, it sometimes you do what you do. Robin Villeneuve, three for three out of the leadoff spot. You know, the guy who chases curveballs, breaking balls, he's up there hacking tonight. Three for three, two runs scored for him tonight. Um, Brings his average up to 356 on the season. Some potential noteworthy news again that could happen this weekend, could happen as soon as next week. I mean, who knows? It could happen as soon as this weekend. Blake Burke, two for two, a home run, a walk, two RBIs, one run. Blake Burke is with one within one home run of tying the school record by Luke, Luke Lipsius, two in being in first place all time. Christian Moore, on the other hand, is what, two behind him at this point? At the end of this season, barring injuries or anything, these two guys are going to be one and two on the career home run total. The more impressive thing, so they're going to be passing Luke Lipsius and they're going to be passing Evan Russell. Those guys were there five years. Blake Burke, Christian Moore, three-year guys. In my eyes, I'm looking at Todd Helton they passed, so another three-year guy. Those were the most impressive totals in this program's history to me. You had a couple guys with extra years in Lipsis and Russell. They really added a lot of their home runs on those fourth and fifth years that they were there. But I mean, still, have, I'm not taking anything away from, but in comparison, these guys are doing it in three years versus five on it. They're going to be probably a good possibility next week that these guys are one and two on the all-time all Tennessee home run list. That's pretty impressive. You know, anytime you pass Todd Helton and something, that's pretty impressive company there. I mean, Lipsius and Russell, really good players for Tennessee as well, no doubt. So they're in uh, good company down here now. But Burke, two of two tonight. You had Moore was moved back down to third. Tonight. I'm curious to see what they do with the lineup this weekend. Moore went 0 for 3 with a walk and a strikeout. Tears stayed fourth, 1 for 3 with a double. You had Hunter Inslee in center starting to swing a better bat. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him, 2 for 3. Tonight with a double and an RBI and a run scored. Inslee's now got his average on the year up to 284. Considering where he was at, I, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with how he's been swinging the bat lately. Kobe Back has come in later on the game, had his patented one for one. Uh, I say patented. I mean, he's hitting 417 on the year in 12 at bats. 
Dean Curley tonight in his action, he was one for two, two runs scored. He had a walk. He did have a strikeout looking, but he's got his average now on the season up to 308. So his kind of fluctuates between low 300s, high two, high 200s. Basically, he's kind of been fluctuating back and forth lately. He's down to about 260, and then he had some time that he got that back up. So good night for him swinging a bat. And again, he played third tonight instead of short. So it's, I think that's probably the option you're going to see this week. If I had to guess that Antigua goes to short, Curly at third. Now, could they look at some other options possibly? But I'm not really sure who else. I don't think Bargo. I know Bargo can play a lot of positions. He is a utility guy. So, you know, I think they've worked him some at second. I, they've worked Hunter Inslee some at second as well. So there's a lot of options this team can go with. And I, I like that with Vitello. There's things that, you know, I – call it like I said a lot of times there's some things I don't like overall I mean the pluses are <laughs> outweigh the minuses by a lot I like how he gives guys looks not so much we haven't seen it in games but getting ready that's where you want to see where you could potentially have options instead of I always hate when I hear a younger guy well I'm a first baseman I'm a second base get out there and learn every position man you know if you're a first baseman you should know every position on that field if you're a catcher you should know every position on that field. I, I can't stand it when a guy's just an outfielder, just a first baseman. Maybe down the line, that's where you focus and that's where your future is. At a young age, man, learn them all. Learn them all. That way you know how every position operates. I like that with Tony because that gives guys that opportunity. You know how throws are coming, especially if you're a first baseman, how throws are going to be coming to you from third, from short, from second. You know, if you're the cut guy, you want to know how a throw – is coming from the outfield. You get that outfield work, you know where you're going with it. It's common sense to me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, I mean, I don't have kids. I don't in ball or anything like that. I've just coached. But to me, I love it that they've got so many guys working different positions right there. Some of the, getting back to the lineup here is a little off. To, this is what I'm liking, man. Because there was at one point I said I, I'm just not seeing it out of Chapman, and I know he was. Recruited pretty well, but tonight, four for four, five RBIs, a double, a home run, a stolen base, two runs scored. He, he's he been hitting really well. He hit good last weekend. He's got his average up to 393 now, and it was around 200. So hats off to him for what he's done with his um, with his bat here. The couple, He's a factor now, and you know this is, I guess, at times why you keep giving guys at bats. You see it in practice. You see it in the cage. You're like, I want to see it in the game. Chapman is starting to produce. Hunter Ensley starting to come on. That's a good thing, guys. That is a good thing. You cannot have enough bats. Cannot have enough bats, especially, you know, your catcher's kind of struggling a little bit with the bat. Peebles has his moments. The other guys, if they get hit, it's it's a surprise. It, it just is. I mean, you know, good, good defensive catchers and stuff. They're not in – Stark and Taylor, they're not in for their bats. They're never going to be. Uh, Stark may come through occasionally with a big hit, home run, or something. Taylor, yeah, you can almost chalk that one up as an automatic out. Not trying to hate, not trying to be negative. Or it, it is what it is. We've, we've seen the proof in the pudding with him. And Tigua was 0 for 3, had a strikeout, and then Charlie Taylor 0 for 3, had an RBI. Tonight, Antigua, and he's still yet to get a hit yet. So he's had four official at bats on the year with one strikeout. So curious to see that bat come on. He did, um, was it last week? He he mashed one his first at bat, and the wind was blowing so much it blew it foul. So uh, yeah, I, I still like what I've seen out of him. But th that left side of the infield for Tennessee is set this year and a couple years down the line. And, you know, that's not even including guys we haven't seen yet and guys who will come in. Uh, as well, but um, uh, great night for the batters. Great to see some of these guys coming on like they did. You know, the building tonight, Ethan Payne had an error. The ball went through his glove. If you've seen or not, Antigua, Antigua kind of reminds me a little bit of Raphael for call when he played for the Braves, of course, played for other teams as well. But dude has a hose at shortstop, he has an absolute cannon for an arm. Looked to me like it just went right through each. Ethan Payne's first base mitt and broke the mitt. He had to go get another glove. Um, that That's pretty interesting. That, that's pretty impressive at the same time. 
Uh, shifting over to the pitching tonight, Tennessee threw seven guys tonight. Seven innings, got a uh, an inning apiece out of Dylan Lloyd, Derek Schaefer, Austin Hunley, Matthew Dallas, Chris Stamos, Braden Sharp, and Marcus Phillips. So only one run tonight for Sharp, and it was unearned. Now, the guy did reach base, got a hit, but the run came in on the one where Antigua threw it through Ethan Payne's glove. Only three hits tonight, no walks. No walks. That's a big positive for me because these younger guys have struggled with their control. So on the night, five strikeouts to no walks in seven innings. That's a that's a workman's like night for this baseball team night. They come in, they took care of business, they did not mess around, and uh, you know they end a two the last two game losing streak to Tennessee Tech. Hats off to this team. Hats off to these guys. They're hitting. Hats off to these young dudes who pitched tonight who come in, they threw strikes, they got outs, and they got out of innings. You know, minimal pitch counts, the most anybody had tonight on their pitch counts was um, 14. You had Lloyd Schaefer and Stamos all at 14, Hunley 11, Dallas 8. I like that because I think he has a lot of potential. He's had a little trouble with control issues, eight pitches, no strikeouts for him, but you know what? He got to fly out two ground outs. The name of the game is to get outs. He did his job. Tonight, Shaper, I, I like two strikeouts in his inning. Phillips was out in 10 pitches, Sharp 13, Stamos 14. So, you know, effective night for this team moving forward. You know, how does this team react with Billy Amick out tonight? was good. How's it going to go against Georgia this weekend? Talking about Georgia this weekend, I saw somebody ask Kendall Rogers on D1 Baseball because Georgia swept Alabama this past weekend. said, what's it going to take for them to get the top 25? And he said, win the series against Tennessee this weekend. So Georgia is close to being a top 25 team. The thing to look out for them, with them is when they played Kentucky, the opening weekend of SEC season, Kentucky did sweep them, uh, and that was at Kentucky. So I think this bolds well. I think this is a matchup that's going to bold well for Tennessee. Georgia has some players. I'll preview that series later on here in the week. So I'll get into that a little bit more. But I'm going to wrap up on that one. Um, last night I released uh, Tennessee Creighton Preview. For this weekend, if you're into the basketball, your basketball guy, I hope you'll check that out. I've been working tonight pretty freaking hard on something, actually, about that game. I've, I've taken both teams' losses. I'm looking at their numbers from team statistics, what they've done, their opponents, and their main players. And I've wanted to look I've, and kind of comparing it to their norms on it. I don't think I'll have it. I may have it done tonight, but I'm not going to record it and release it tonight. I will release that tomorrow, and I'm pretty excited about that. I hope this video will do good because I probably put more into this one than any other video I've done. And I'm on, uh, as far as short videos, 113 right now. This is episode 113. It's not including live streams or anything like that. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in with me. Make sure you hit that like button, that you share this thing out. Get it out there to people that may be interested in baseball, basketball, and they can't find that coverage. It's here. I'm going to provide it here with it. But I hope you guys have a good rest of the evening. My name's Frank Rock, House Foreign Sports Channel. The Vols rock and roll. They run roll again. As always, go Vols. Mm -hmm.